Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're certainly thankful and grateful for another Wednesday evening when we can come together and study the Word of God. As we prepare for this evening's lesson, let us begin with a song and a prayer. What a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arm What a blessedness What a peace of mind Leaning on the everlasting arm Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all along Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting arm Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all along Leaning, leaning Leaning on the everlasting arm What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arm. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting <coughs> arm. <coughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful for another opportunity to petition that throne of grace. We thank you, O oh God, and we praise you for all that you have done, for all that you are going to do, and for all that you are doing right now. We thank you, O oh Lord, that things are as well as they are. For we realize things can be much worse than they are, but you've seen fit to look beyond our faults and supply I ever need. We thank you, O oh God, <coughs> and we praise you, for we realize it is not because of our goodness, neither because we kept your commandments so well, but it was because of your grace and your mercy that we are still here and that we are still able to give thee the praise. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would look on those that are sick among us and bless them right now. Bless them with divine healing. Bless them with recovery. Bless them with 
healing that can only come from on high. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would look on all of the communities that have been devastated by the weather that we are having and all of the flooding and destruction of land and houses. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would go with us and stand by us. That you would lead, guide, and direct us. In the mighty name of Jesus, look every church that stands open in your name. Look on every one that is calling upon your name. Look on our nation as we go through these troubled times. Help us, O oh God, to be what our creed says, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We pray, O oh God, for this world and all the people of the world. Bring us together and let us understand that we have to get along in order for us to survive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Tonight, we begin by doing a brief recap of what we have already covered uh, last week. One of the things in trying to and learning how to experience peace of mind, we must have a single-mindedness. Single mind. Be of a single mind. The psalmist says in verse and verse one thirteen that the Lord said, I hate the double minded, but I love the law. Then if we are a single mind, then we must learn how to be humble. We must humble ourselves. Because the God that we serve is a mighty God. And when we get so high-minded, when we reach the point where we think that we are better than anybody else, that's the time when Satan has full control of us. So we must learn how to be humble. Lo, you seek me, and lo, you shall find me. Then tonight we pick up the narrative, Psalms 119, starting at verse 121 through verses 126. Be submissive. Now, here we are. The psalmist realizes we cannot withstand his, he cannot withstand his oppressors without God's help. He has done his best to do judgment and justice, but his best is not good enough. No one is smart enough, rich enough, powerful enough, resourceful enough, to, de to defeat the overwhelming enemy, Satan and his fallen angels, the rebellious world, and our own fallen flesh. We are just not smart enough. We just don't have what it takes to defeat all of that. Heard one economist say the other day that greed numics has taken over our country and somehow we have to get common sense back in place. These enemies of God seek to destroy mankind who is made in the image of God. What is our only hope? Our only hope, according to Romans 10 and 9. Romans 10 and 9 says, and this is from the New King James, that if you confess with your mouth 
the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When we, when we submit to Jesus Christ as our Lord, we become, he becomes our king and we become his servants. As servants in God's kingdom, you can call on your king for help. That's why it, it's strange to me, and I hear it time and time again, too many of our preachers and pastors today, they make a habit or they don't see the necessity to always close their messages with a view of the redemptive work that Christ did on Calvary. To extend that invitation to tell those that are listening, this is why you need to try Jesus. This is what he did so that you could be one of his servants. In Psalms 119 and verse 122, it says, Take your servant's interest into your keeping. Let me not be crushed by men of pride. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, I think our problem is we want to show off our knowledge when it's all about winning souls for Christ. And how can you win them? unless you tell them what Christ did for them. And you must convince them that for that reason alone, if nothing else, you need to give your heart to him. Look what he did for you, even when you didn't deserve it. The psalmist tells us, be surety for thy servant for good and against and again, in verse 124, deal with thy servant according to thy mercy. God has made a way for us. And the psalmist asked him, don't let your servant be crushed by pride, by the pride, the men of pride. Don't let him be crushed. Don't let them. And we got some folks in this country right now that are running for high office in this land and their pride is so high till they will crush us in order to get where they want to be. Christian can experience peace of mind in any circumstance because we know the truth, the truth that's found in 1 John verses 4 and 4. Chapter 4 and verse number 4. Bible in basic English says, You are of God, my little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. In other words, Satan is in the world, but God, is bigger and greater than Satan. The word translated greater, megas. We serve a king who has mega power. I didn't say mega, I said mega power. However, our king also has steadfast love for his servant. The only way we can lose our peace of mind as if we forget those delightful truths. We got to understand that God is our strength. This is why the psalmist called, called out in verse 125 and said, I am your servant. Give me understanding that I might know thy testimonies. As long as I know the word of God, 
I can find peace in every situation because I know God is in charge. I know God is able. He's able to do anything but fail. Too many of us, we, we don't seem to understand that, that everybody that is born of a woman is up but a few days and they are filled with trouble. So why wouldn't you want peace of mind in those short days that you are here on earth? The thing that we have to understand is that the deeper our understanding of God's testimonies are, the deeper our peace of mind will flow. To experience peace of mind in a chaotic world like we live in today. To be single-minded in our commitments. To be humble in our weakness. Be submissive to our loving king, then it will lead us to be something else. It will lead us to be considerate. Verse 127 and 128, considerate. Before you start passing out judgment on others, you need to be considerate. You need to know that you are not perfect. You have not always done the right things in the eyesight of God, that you yourself need the Lord. Now, I know that might sound funny to some of y'all. I need the Lord. Yeah, you need him. Everybody need the Lord. We need him more today than we did yesterday. The closer we get to the end, the more we need him. When we carefully consider what is important in our life. What's important in your life? Too often today I see folk neglect their duties around church, at church, and their Christian duty because of family and the sake of having a good time. We can keep everything in, we need to keep everything in proper perspective. Everything. We need to prioritize stuff. You need the law. You need to carefully consider. I've often, I've said many, many times over the years, I've said to the congregation that church membership is a way of life. Church membership, a way of life. Forget all of that secular stuff. Church membership becomes your way of life. We have what we consider to be entertaining things. We're not always so serious. We have entertaining things. Friends and family day and so forth. Church picnics and so forth. Our priorities. Be considerate. We are considerate. You must be considerate and know that the, there's things that used to be important before you became a believer in Christ. Those things are not nearly as important as your service to the king. As we practice God's precept, we become wise. And our minds become more peaceful. This doesn't mean we we won't have that we're going to have peace all the time. No, you're not going to have peace all the time in this fallen world. Sometimes there's going to be some difficulties. Jesus himself said, suppose ye that I came to give peace on earth, and I tell you nay, but rather division. He came so that you could make a choice. And the prophet Elijah said, How long halt ye between two opinions? 
If God be God, then serve God. And if Baal, then serve Baal. The Christians will never live at peace in this sinful world. But you can have peace of mind because you know who's in charge of the world. You know his word and his precepts. However, Jesus did tell us this. Jesus said, Jesus said, however, Jesus does not bring peace to all of those who will receive him. In John 16 and 33, Jesus tells his followers, he is teaching us so in him we may have peace. However, he also adds this in the last part of that verse. He says, these things I have spoken unto you. John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken unto you that ye may be, that ye may have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Because of what he has overcome, we have hope that we one day will overcome. One morning, story goes, as I dashed out the front door on my way to work, mine was on the urgent task that was waiting for me at work. As I heard the door close behind me, a cold sensation went down my spine. I had just locked myself out of the house. I tried the door. Door was locked tight. I went to the back door. It was locked tight. I pushed on the nearby window. It was shut tight. My stress level is climbing. Higher and higher. As I realized, my cell phone was inside the house. I couldn't even call anybody to come help me. As my mind was spinning around and I'm looking for a solution, I decided, I, let me sit down and try to think this thing out. As I sat down on the step, something punched me. The answer poked me in the backside. My keys were in my back pocket. I panicked because I didn't know where they were. You panic when you don't know the word of God, when you get in a chaotic situation. If you knew his word, no matter what situation you're in, you know he has the power to bring you out. He said, you are going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I've overcome and you can overcome too. So don't sweat it. I got it covered. I got you. I got you back. The only way we as Christians can lose our peace of mind is if we forget we have access to the king of the universe. That's why the Bible tells us we ought to always pray. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul is saying in Philippians 4 and 6. In Philippians 4 and 6 it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Prayer. There ought to be all kind of praying going on in church on Sundays. There ought to be all kind of praying going on in church during the week. We do things a little bit differently now since COVID has come along. We don't have the public gatherings that we once had, but we can still come together. God has given us the technology where we can combine conference line, Facebook live, YouTube, Zoom. We can still come together 
and pray together. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, giving thanks. First thing you ought, to, you ought to have in mind when you're praying to God is to be thankful. Be thankful. Always be thankful. True peace is not found in positive thinking. In the absence of conflict or in good feelings. It comes from knowing that God is in control. True peace is not found in positive thinking. It's not found in the absence of conflict or in good feelings. It comes from knowing that no matter what's going on in your life, God is in control. Okay, what you facing? God is in control. Don't care how dire the situation seems to be. God is in control. Perhaps you experiencing tribulations in this world and you're not feeling the peace of mind God offers. Well, I got news for you. Look in your back pocket. Look in your back pocket. And consider all the promises and the testimonies of the Bible. Oh, I know what the problem is. You don't want to attend Sunday school. You don't want to attend Bible study. So you don't know his precepts. You don't know his testimony. You don't just sit down and read the the Bible, like you read the Sunday paper. So you don't know what God has left on record. When you know what he has left on record, it's just like I was when I was looking for my keys. They were in my back pocket all the time. Whatever you need, you can find it in the word of God. Put your faith in them and watch Watch God work. Every time I start getting nervous about something, I find out that God has already made a way. And I'll be looking, think, thinking to myself, why was I, I know he can make a way. He's done it before. Why would I doubt him now? Just like the psalmist. You will Learn to love God's commandments above gold. Yea, above gold. You will love God's commandment. Because as long as you've got the word of God leading, guiding, and directing you, you are going to be all right. Dr. McKenzie and highlights say, I'll be all right. Over yonder on the other shore, where we'll never have to say goodbye no more. All right. I will be all right. This prayer of the psalmist shows us that to experience peace of mind in a world of chaos, we must first be single-minded. Single-minded in our confidence in the Bible. Don't second-guess the Bible. It says what it says. Don't try to twist it around to fit today's society. It says what it says. Be humble. Admit your weaknesses. You know you're weak in certain areas. Don't try to pretend that you are not. Accept it. Embrace it. And use it to help make you a better person. Be submissive to our loving king. 
Submit yourself to the Lord. Present your body. A living sacrifice. Present your body. Be submissive. And be considerate of the exceeding value of prayer. You can't be a good Christian and you don't never, I don't care if you don't pray for 30 seconds, but you ought to make it a habit to pray 30 seconds, the first thing you do in the morning when you get out of the bed, a 30 second prayer. Before you go to bed at night, a two minute prayer. All through the day, a 15 second prayer. And read a scripture every day. Read a scripture every day. Sometimes you might read a scripture two or three times a day. But read a scripture every day. Be considerate. Consider the exceeding value of prayer and scripture. Go to Sunday school. Go to Bible study. Pray. When you pray and you know the word, you can be at peace. Because you know God going to show you the way through. Willie Neal Johnson and the keynote said, show me the way. I'm down here, Lord, and I need your power. Show me the way. But how are you going to know the way if you have not accepted him as your personal Savior? Well, that's my time for tonight. I, I get a little carried away sometimes when I start talking about certain subjects. But there's, that should be, you should always have peace of mind knowing Whose child you are, who you belong to, and realizing the power that he has. When you submit yourself to him, he has the power. What are you worried about? He got the power. He is the most powerful thing in this universe. And all you got to do is submit yourself to him. Humble yourself, admit your weaknesses, and submit yourself to that loving king who is able to present you faultless before his glory with exceeding joy. That's my time. God bless you. May he keep you is our prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, as we come to the close of tonight's study, we thank you, O oh God, and we praise you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you, O oh God, for we realize that you are an all-powerful God. And as long as we are on your side, as long as you are on our side, we have nothing to worry about. We can have peace of mind because you will solve the problem. You may not come when we want you to, but you are always on time. And much as we try and much as we want to be in a hurry up, right now world, there are times when all we can do is wait on you. And we're waiting on you because we know what your word says, that you will not leave us nor forsake us. You'll always be right by our side. We ask you right now to bless those that have listened in with us tonight. Bless them and open their minds and hearts that they may become better servants unto thee. This we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.